G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today, part two of the mini bike build. Pay no attention to what's going on in here because that's top secret and you'll find out sooner or later. You're looking, aren't you? Don't look. Keep your eyes focused on the mini bike. Don't look at that. This you crazy mother. So what we're going to do today is try and get the front end mounted, uh, work out seat base, uh, wheel, back wheel mounted, clutch mounted, sprocket on the rim, and uh, maybe a rear brake. We'll see what happens. You're not allowed to look at that. You'll work out what that is later on, but I can tell you right now, it is definitely worth subscribing for. Keep your eyes down here. Anyway, stop looking at it. Keep your eyes down here. Down. Down here. Look. Stop it. So let me begin by telling you a little story about these things. These are Dexons. Deltec, Dexon, Grand Prix, Australian mini bikes. They've gone absolutely crazy. And there's people, collectors out there, and people aren't going to like me for this, but I don't really care because I think it's ridiculous, that are going absolutely nuts, making out they're not worth a lot of money, and they're going to offer you 100 bucks or 200 bucks for something that they know is worth a heck of a lot more than that. They're like a bunch of seagulls to a bag of chips. So, yeah, just so you know, don't go giving them away. They're worth good coin because I'll pay good money for them. I needed some bushes for my steering head and my seat. And I'm like, need some bushes. Who knows where I can get bushes? And some guy goes, yeah, I've got bushes. He wanted 100 bucks, including post, for those two bushes and the steering head bushes. Something that would probably cost about $5 to make. I'm like, I'm no fool. I'm not paying that sort of money. So one of the challenges today is to nut out something. I've probably got something laying around that'll fit in both of those little holes and uh, that we can use that's going to cost me absolutely nothing. So let's do that. I'm not a restorer and I make no apologies for that. And if you've been on the channel long enough, you'd know that. And just to give you a little idea, these came out with a little chrome fuel tank. People are paying up around $500 for a decent one just for the fuel tank. So don't give your fuel tank away, even for a rusty one. I'll pay you good money. I'm not going to do that because I think that's ridiculous. I got for $10 an early Victor fuel tank, which oh, I don't know which way I'll mount it yet. Probably that way. That's a more traditional way. 10 bucks. This has even got the Victor boomerang logo on the tank. And I'm pretty sure I've got an old brass fuel tap from one of these in the toolbox. Uh, which is worried it. fuel tap two Victor fuel taps look at that that's a genuine one and from memory this one is an aftermarket one which if one doesn't leak so let's get into the nuts and bolts of it and uh, piece this together so then we can blow it apart paint it make it pretty and do some skids at the boogaloo oh I've been accepted too by the way entries accepted yes <laughs> So here's how I do it. I've been playing with cars and bikes and all sorts of stuff for, I don't want to say, but since I was at school. And you don't throw stuff out. And that's not hoarding, like exhaust rubbers. And so I've got boxes, you know, nuts and bolts and brackets and whatever else. Things you cut off, little brackets that you can reuse and weld. That's how you save money. I don't have a lot of money. I recycle stuff. So that's how you do it. This box is full of the smaller stuff. Then I've got boxes that increase in size. And then I've got boxes that are marked according to what they're out of. I'll show you. So here, Mopar stuff. More Mopar stuff. Early Holden rust panels. Box of seat belts. It's full. It's chock a block. On the other side of that, it says mini bikes and motorbikes. Harley stuff. GM stuff. So anything General Motors. Uh, Model A Ford over here. I've got a container for springs, I've got a container for spark plugs. I was mucking with airbags once upon a time. I have a container which is up the other shed 
full of wheel nuts, and those are fine. Then we've just been stacking them there. Over here, that's full of like pit bike parts. Um, that's a bigger size box of off cuts and brackets and bits and pieces that I could make stuff out of. Um, this is stuff I haven't sorted out. So give, this is an example of what I do. Uh, I can get focus in there. You can hardly see it. But that is all bits and pieces I took off that blue sea and Valiant when I was building my uh, VE. Um, I unbolt stuff and I put it in a box and then I can use it later because it is gold. It comes invaluable later on down the track. And the reason I'm telling you this is because it becomes my source of supply when I'm looking for something to make these bushes out of. Because I've probably got something here that'll work. That cost me nothing, but I just saved. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So here's an example. I'm currently looking for spaces and bushes. So as I rummage through my hordes of bits and pieces, instead of just throwing them back in the box, where they're mixed up with nuts and bolts, made up a new box, spaces and bushes, and that can go up on my shelf somewhere, and it's there for the next time I can go through that. So whenever I find a spacer or a bush, I can just chuck it in this and carry on with my searching. Haha, uh -huh. and don't get me confused with someone that's organised, because I'm definitely not organised at all. Don't you look at that thing that's up there. There you go, seat bush. I'll cut that in half. That's the interference fit. Holds a good size for a bolt. That's my seat sorted out. There you go, some shock bushes. If they can handle 100,000 k's of bouncing up and down on a road with a big massive car, they can handle little old me on a little Victor powered mini bike some steering head bushes for free while I think about it let me give a little tip on two-stroke engines if you're buying a two-stroke motorbike mower whatever brush cutter do yourself a favor and rip the muffler off it's easy to do um, and you can look down into the cylinder to the piston that there is the piston um, I don't know where you can see that but you'll be able to tell if it's been run without oil in the fuel this one's really clean. Another thing you can do is you can check the rings. So there's your rings, and you can check how warm they are by getting a screwdriver and just pushing on them and seeing how far they go in and out. Obviously, if it's excessive, if you've got experience, you kind of got the, you've got an idea of how far, but if it's excessive, the rings are worn. If it doesn't move a lot, they're not worn. And then you can go further down, and this thing blew my mind. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and get some light in there. Um, but there's hone marks in this one. So it's done nothing, which is pretty cool. So a good way to check your two strokes because you're going to hand over money. Tell them you want to look inside the bore. It's really easy, really quick to do, and quick to assemble back together. A bit of uh, bit of insurance. So one of today's challenges is to get this tire off this rim because it's rusted on. Um, it's too small. So I'll give you an idea of what the right tire is supposed to look like. There's a diameter, and it just dwarfs it. So we're going to get the tire off. Now the other problem I have is this was supposed to be a Dexon wheel, but it doesn't work with a Dexon sprocket. So that's the hub. That's a Dexon sprocket, which is an aftermarket one. Um, none of the holes line up and the center is the wrong size. So that's correct. That's not. So what I need to do, I've already marked it. I need to increase the hole size by that much and drill new holes to suit that um, because it's hard to get people are asking silly money for things so I'll use it it was supposed to be correct and it isn't that there is um, Honda posty and that fits the drum so we'll be using that for the back brake so I've had no luck separating the rim from the tire so I had to cut it which is rusted in pretty good but inside of the rim looks okay but it did give me an idea for when I'm entertaining guests would anybody like a Ritz cracker? So I'm going to leave part two there, we've got our sprocket on the hub, got our tyre off the rim, um, which that was a massive task, that's done, um, 
We've got our steering head bushes sorted out. We've got our seat bush sorted out. Rear axle sorted out. I've still got to get a front axle, which I'll probably have laying around. Um, my chain's arrived. So in reality, I could probably get this running and riding, but we're doing this up. I've got some alignment stuff I've got to sort out with my clutch versus rear sprocket. You don't want to see all that's going to be boring. Next episode, we'll hopefully have that all sorted out. Hubs will get painted up so we can put tyres on and then we can just give it a test spin and then it'll be uh, pull it apart and uh, sandblast it, paint it and then final assembly. Basic stuff to do. Yeah, it's a cool little beast. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Be good to your mates. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Don't look at that, but that's coming up soon. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. I'm going to go and hook it to some Jats crackers, I think.